We are gonna have the perfect day at Universal Studios Hollywood. And that includes Super Nintendo World! We are here at Universal Studios Hollywood. I have been to Universal Hollywood, but not Super Mario. I haven't been here before, ever. But we are here, and uh, we obviously spent a lot of time at Universal Orlando, and so we are so excited to be here, to like look at how it's different, see how to have the perfect day in this park. We've done a lot of research, we've been writing about uh, Universal Studios Hollywood, so we know our stuff. So excited! And we're dressed as Mario and Luigi. So the first step to a perfect day at uh, Universal Studios Hollywood is unfortunately an upcharge. Yes. It is paying for early access to Super Nintendo World. On most days you can do early access starting an hour before the park opens to Super Nintendo World for $20 to $30 depending on the date and demand. Um, we did get it for $30 in August so we showed up at the park, we got here at like 6.15. Super Nintendo World's main attraction is Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge. This is a slow moving ride that uses augmented reality to make it feel like you are playing Mario Kart. Collecting coins, shooting mushrooms, and just racing for Team Mario in general. <laughs> it's so cool! We're ra oh we can't look around because we're racing to get in line for Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge. We're going to be like the 12th people in line. Walking all the way through it, but totally themed 
as different parts of Nintendo World. The plot of the ride is that Bowser has challenged Mario to a race, and you're racing for Team Mario. If you get 100 coins, Team Mario wins, and if not, Team Bowser wins. Yeah. Which would be a big bummer. It would be a pretty big bummer, but it's possible. Yeah, it is possible. Um, the ride is augmented reality, like I said, so you get a visor that does not have glasses on it, and then when you sit down in your vehicle, you you magnet attach the glasses it to your was face. Crazy. And then you race yeah. and you can see the other racers around you. And at first I, I had to adjust to the augmented okay. reality personally. But once I did, I like was having trouble differentiating what was real and what was virtual. Yeah. It's incredibly immersive. It feels like being yeah. in a video game like You're I never have before. So incredibly focused that you don't realize at any point, okay, this isn't actually in front of me. Yeah. It's really incredible. Yeah, it was a total blast. I'm so glad we rope dropped it. It did, it was delayed opening this morning. We were still off of the ride by about 7.30. So I think, I mean, just for that alone, this worth the money. And on top of that, now we are about to explore the rest of Super Nintendo Land, which you can get long lines just for the interactive experiences, yeah. with a lot fewer people in the land than there will be at 8 a.m. What was your score on Mario? 82 points. 142. But we'll see how it goes when we play real Mario Kart. I'm gonna lose. One time I was playing real Mario Kart and thought I won, and then everybody was like, why are you excited? You're actually in a different corner. And I was, in fact, in last place and thought I was driving for someone else. Just in general, there's a lot of like sound and color and brightness. You can see toad and, and there's piranha plants and everything just all around on the like ceilings and the higher levels. Um, there's mushrooms, speed mushrooms. Are we gonna meet Princess Peach? I would love to meet Peach. However, I think our number one thing we need to do right now, power bands. Power bands. So though Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge is the only actual true ride here in Super Nintendo World, one of the main attractions is the interactive elements of the land that you can play using power bands. There are these kiosks where you can pick out your power band. There are six options as of right now. Uh, we are dressed as Luigi and Mario, but we're only getting one power band because they are $40 and we can share, yeah. and you can do that too. We're only here for one day too, so it doesn't really make sense to do multiple. Perhaps if you're an annual pass holder here, getting your own makes sense, but if you're just coming for a visit, I think sharing one in your group is just gonna be just fine. You can sync your power-up band with Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge, and it'll save your score, and help like sync your play with your band and your progress in the land. You can also sync it with the Universal Studios Hollywood app. And that is how you're gonna track your progress on the play aspect of Nintendo Land. Power up toad, power, power up toad, power up toad, power up toad. Even if you don't get to early entry quite as quickly as we do, uh, it was only within like the last couple of minutes that the Mario Kart line went over an hour. And it will stay that long pretty much all day. We will keep an eye on it, but it's at 70 minutes and early entry hasn't even ended yet. It's 7.47. So it would behoove you to get here early, even in early entry. And if you don't have early entry, you're gonna be stuck with that pretty long line by the time you do get in. Who do you race in Mario Kart? As? Yeah. Peach. Shocker there. I know. Yeah. I'm surprised you asked. I go dry bones. Dry Bones is the coolest! Please let me know in the comments who you race as in Mario Kart. It's important to me that I know. We've decided that this is as important as like Zodiac sign. Yeah, potentially more important. Agreed. Yeah. This is the Power Up Band. Uh, and you use this for the Power Up Band key challenges around the land. They are interactive games where you are basically helping to defeat Bowser. Bowser Jr. has stolen the Golden Mushroom and you can use your power-up band to help retrieve the Golden Mushroom for Princess Peach by playing interactive games throughout the land and you collect digital keys to unlock a final shadow showdown with Bowser Jr. Are we gonna I'm unlock gonna the final that. shadow showdown? Duh. Duh. Toadstool Cafe is the like wildly famous toad themed restaurant. It is the cutest building I've ever seen in my life and I can't wait to go in there. All of the food is like Nintendo and toad themed and it's apparently very, very good, uh, but it does fill up. It gets very busy. If you want to eat 
at Toadstool Cafe, you do want to get in on the wait list. The way to do that is by scanning QR codes that are available inside of Super Nintendo World or at the entrance of Super Nintendo World. So you can come in and scan them right here at Toadstool Cafe and get on the wait list. Because we're in early access and we did get in here as soon as we got off of Bowser's Challenge, we are on the wait list for our time of choice and we went ahead and picked 11. Uh, there were earlier times and there were later times. Times ran from about 8 a.m. to about 2 p.m. We chose 11 just because we do want to do Toad Stool Cafe for lunch, but we don't want to risk not getting into the restaurant. So we scanned that QR code and went ahead and booked our spot on the wait list and it told us to return at 11 a.m. with our party of two to be seated at Toad Stool Cafe. So we'll show you how the rest of that works around lunchtime. So another thing after you buy your power up band is you're gonna have to go into the Universal Hollywood app and connect it so that way you can see your points, you can make your character names and all that good jazz. It is actually fairly easy, so let's walk through what I did. Okay, so you're gonna go to the Universal Play section of the app and it's gonna talk about in-park games and what that means. Then you're gonna find Super Nintendo World Companion Game and you're gonna hit play. So it just teaches you how to go through it and then the inside of your band, once you have it open, the back of it is gonna to have a QR code. You're gonna scan that QR code. From there, you're gonna be able to make your player name and you get to choose your character and the background for it. And then after that, you're good to go. And that's where you're gonna keep track of your points and all of your activities while you play with your band. Let's play some games. games. I love some I'm games. gonna go punch this block. What if there's more? What? What if there's more? There's not more. I'm gonna get a bush like this in my yard. I was actually gonna say how much I like it. I actually like I'm really obsessed with it. We collected two stamps Woo! since we last did the app. Two out of 128. Oh my gosh, we have a lot of work to do. Can we see them? See how you stack up against other players via your team, individual, and daily rankings too. Woohoo! If you're a Mario person, I absolutely think you should get at least one band. This, this is, is like so the crazy. best thing ever. This is crazy and it should Look at how many the there are. We have to hurry. We have to get 128 stamps. <laughs> Yay, we're punching. We are in line for one of the Power Up games and the park is officially open. Uh, as a note, Mario Kart Bros. Challenge is at 100 minutes at park open. So. If you're really dead set on it and you do mind to wait, that early access is gonna make a big difference. Now it's 130 minutes and the ride for Bowser's Challenge is backed up almost to the entrance of the land, which is wild because the queue is super long. It took us probably 10 minutes to walk through the queue. Of course, the power-up bands are not the only merchandise offering here. One Up Factory is uh, a merchandise spot. You actually do exit through here when coming off of Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge. And uh, it's pretty busy because the, the merchandise is pretty popular. Mario and Luigi hats. We got ours on Amazon for cheaper. Mario and Luigi tanks, Super Nintendo mugs, Mario and Luigi sweatshirts, King Boo shirts. I love the power up shirts. Bowser, Mario Kart Grand P, Bullet Bill Speed Trial. I love Bullet Bill. Best part of Mario Kart is when you get a Bullet Bill and you're in last. So basically a ton of Nintendo apparel, souvenirs, there's signs, magnets, pins, mugs, everything you can maybe want. Um, I think for me, my favorite thing is this Star Power Up popcorn bucket. I don't even like popcorn buckets that much. I don't even eat popcorn. But this is so cute. And we, of we, course, we of said course yeah because one that's very nice, and two yeah. like it's better for all of us. Yeah, exactly. So we teamed up yeah. and we did beat the piranha. So not to brag or anything, but we're pretty we good. Did get a key. So we've beaten Bowser and the piranha. We're walking into Peach's castle, and we don't know why. I know why. 
to get to punch the blocks. Punch, 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 punch. Have you been? Oh, you know why you didn't get the combo block? Why? Where did you punch these ones? No. That's why you didn't get the combo block. We'll go back. Silly goose. This is so wild. It literally looks like walking through a Mario Kart map. Yeah, I'm actually like, I want to say more useful things, but I've not even processed what I'm seeing. It's just, I, like, I'm like blown away by the theming and everything. Okay, so as we're still walking around and exploring the entire area, we just noticed that Toadstool Cafe is completely booked for the day. So that is one of the best perks, I think, of um, early entry outside of the Mario Kart game, is just being able to guarantee, almost, that you're gonna get in that restaurant. So, excited for us! And I can't wait to eat there. Me too, I'm so hungry already. Me too. You did that! I'm that so one proud is of not you! Soft. More to do. Yes, I'm not gonna do. Punch the wall. Gentle. Hey! It's me, Luigi! Luigi. Woo! It's not all games, shopping, and rides, though. There's also character meet and greets here in Nintendo World. We've got Mario and Luigi out right now. And they are so cute, that's so crazy. And then Princess Peach does come out as well. All right, we have taken our leave from Super Nintendo World for the time yeah. being. Yeah. We're going back, obviously, for the Toadstool Cafe, which we're so excited about. But right now we're checking out the wait time on the Jurassic World ride, because uh, this is another total must-do for us. Uh, Jurassic rides are always just a blast. Who doesn't love dinosaurs? And the Jurassic World ride is a super lengthy, oh, it's a 50 minute wait. <laughs> We're riding it. So for Jurassic World, the ride, you literally get to step into Jurassic World. Of course, just like the movies, maybe things aren't exactly what you want them to be. It seems like a fun little simple, you know, kind of boat ride through Jurassic World. You're gonna see some cool dinosaurs, but then things get a little dangerous. There might be a drop. I don't wanna to spoil too much, but I'm very excited. Nintendo World obviously has that exciting new land vibe, so it's super crowded in there and a lot less crowded outside of there. Uh, our wait for this was pretty much a walk-on. Yeah. It was like, it was. yeah. don't like quote-unquote water rides. I don't know if we just got really lucky, but I wasn't that wet. We did not get very wet, and I do think we got lucky a couple times, but I didn't see, I'm not, I'm not seeing people walking off the boat. Soaked, yeah. Like, it's really not as bad as I anticipated. Yeah. The animatronics, insane. Unbelievable. I it's know. It's like looking at a real dinosaur. Well, I was gonna say, I know this is gonna sound silly, and maybe it won't, maybe it will, 
but I was looking at the last two in particular, the massive ones. Yeah. And my first thought was like, that is comparable to what they probably used when they filmed the original. Movie. Oh my gosh, exactly. Truly, or it like was when incredible. the when the T-Rex's head was poking through, I was like, that is. It was that's really, like what. Really impressive. There's a part where the T-Rex's head looks down at you in the boat, and I was like, this is literally what happens in the movie in Jurassic Park. I don't know. It's just a very cool ride. I know that a lot of people were disappointed when the original closed to change to this. I mean, it still has the exact same system. It's the same boat. It's really, really just kind of a souped up technological it's the version. Same, it's even the same story. Like, yeah. obviously you have the addition of the characters, which maybe if you don't like, you don't like, but it's still dinosaurs wrecking stuff. And a big drop at the end. And it's a blast. It is. All right, we are gonna do breakfast and we have chosen to do breakfast just right by the Jurassic World ride at Jurassic Cafe. The taste of Latin America. But they do have a full breakfast menu, which I will say, I am not accustomed to this. No, I was very surprised when we were doing research for this. I was like, okay, we'll probably do like Starbucks breakfast or like yep. grab and go cinema, like something very quick. Most theme parks, weirdly, unless it's like Magic or Disneyland, don't really do big breakfast spreads. So yeah. I was pretty satisfied. And even then, they're few and far between, um, unless you're at a table service restaurant. So we're we're pretty excited because there is this full, there's two different types of breakfast platters, there's a berries and cream waffle, there's breakfast burritos, which is what I'm going for because I love Me breakfast too. burritos. So. There's even a vegetarian breakfast burrito. I might get that Options one. Options galore. Options galore. While Emma grabs us breakfast, I am grabbing us coffee. There is a Starbucks located right here. We're actually just outside of Super Nintendo World still. And by the way, if you can't get into Super Nintendo World, you can still come and buy the merchandise. There is a shop outside of the park because sometimes when Super Nintendo World gets really busy, it goes to a virtual line and it can be kind of tricky to get in, but that doesn't mean that you can't still buy your souvenir. Oh my gosh. This is so cute. I love Shy Guy. So it took a really long time for coffee, yeah. which that I will be, to be fair, was a grave mistake on my part. We always recommend not getting coffee at a Starbucks in a theme park before like noon, but we are down bad. We got to the hotel at 2 a.m. last night and we had to be up to get on the shuttle to come here at 5 a.m. this morning. So, so, so when we said Gremlin Hour, like Gremlin in all videos, day. Day. Gremlin Day. Gremlin Day. Featuring Mario and Luigi. And also, Mario and Luigi have to go back to Super Nintendo World now because oh, because our Don't Soul Cafe reservation is coming up. So we we just figured we'd do all the eating for the day. Right at now. Lunch. This is a perfect day. So if we have to eat all day. We have to eat all day. Uh, we have to eat all day. We have um, our like list of priorities to get through today and we feel totally confident. The one thing about Universal Studios Hollywood is it's a small park. It's got the upper lot and the lower lot. There's not a ton to see and do. Um, so you kind of can do enough in one day to feel satisfied. Maybe if you needed to do absolutely everything, you probably couldn't one day. We've done a lot more in one day than they offer here. But um, we kind of are able to be leisurely and still be able to get through everything we want to do today, which is that's perfect to me. I love leisure. That's a perfect day. It's a perfect day. But our leisure is now three hours of sleep. So we are headed back to Super Nintendo World. Uh, we're passing out the Transformers meet and greet. Megatron just went inside. Thank goodness. Because one thing about Megatron, he's a scary dude. And it is time for our Toadstool Cafe reservation, which we had huge breakfast burritos as an appetizer. But I think we're still probably going to chow down at Toadstool Cafe because how could we not? Um, it's still super, super busy in here. Bowser's Challenge is at a 160 minute wait. And all of the little power-up games have really long lines too. All right, we are waiting to place our order at Toad Cafe. So at our reservation time, they let everybody from our reservation time in. And uh, since we were waiting there before it was time, we got, we're pretty close up to the front, which is great. But you come in and you wait and then you go up, they send you to a station and you wait to order at that station. And then you get to go sit down in the cutest restaurant I've ever seen in my life. All right, it took a bit. Uh, we got to walk right up and order, but then there was a little bit of a line to wait for a table. But we have now been seated here in Toadstool Cafe. And this restaurant is so cute. So the back wall, you can see the kitchen where the little toads are working to serve up the food. Um, in the center, there's this speed mushroom under the green pipe. 
and it's got this beautiful lit ceiling that totally has the mushroom vibe and the different like power-ups on it like turnip and mushroom and things like that and then outside the windows you can see into like the world of toad oh my gosh look at that little guy but things do happen during your time sitting where like story elements will happen out the windows for instance right when we walked in the lights dimmed and a storm started out the window and uh the airship flew by and started shooting shooting bullet bills into the town we saw luigi run past so it's a super fun immersive element all right so while we went on our food we do have a drink this here is the superstar lemon squash as you can see from the superstars on the side a very good power up to get in mario and to show the, the little jellies the little are stars, stars too so it's honey lemon soda with mango stars and assorted tropical bobas and we're sharing it I but love that boba as well. i also love that it comes with a big enough straw to like enjoy the boba yeah this is something that is right up my alley it is so sweet and carbonated and bubbly it's also very um, fruity, very light. I know it's like a honey lemon soda. Honestly, it just really reminds me of like a sweeter Sprite, like a Sprite that maybe the syrup is a little bit too strong in it. But then with the boba, which I think boba is like a loose term here. It's like popping pearls. It's not like a tapioca boba. I think it's like a Sprite had like a fruit syrup, like a mango fruit syrup in it. And I like that. All right, our first appetizer is the super mushroom soup obviously served in a super mushroom. Uh, this is creamy mushroom soup with super mushroom crackers and the bowl that it's sitting in is included with the purchase. It's $20 for the soup with the bowl and this is such a cute souvenir bowl. Look at this. Wow! And the soup smells amazing and we were just talking about how excited we are that they serve it in a little tin so that it doesn't actually get the bowl dirty so that you don't have like a soup covered bowl in your luggage as you try to travel home. You can also get this bowl with the uh, tomato soup. So if you're more of a tomato fan, less of a mushroom fan, I just think we have to eat mushroom soup out of this. Like that's the only thing that should be eaten out of it, in my opinion. We also saw people a lot talking about the Chef Toad short rib special. So we decided we would go for it. This is braised short rib with a creamy goat cheese polenta, yum, and a red wine reduction. And of course, Chef Toad's on there. For our dessert, we got the Princess Peach Cupcake, uh, which is huge. This is my hand. Look how big this thing is. It is a raspberry filled funfetti cupcake with buttercream frosting and a Princess Peach chocolate crown. It's pretty much all I've ever wanted my whole life ever. I don't like raspberry that much, so I'm interested to see, but Funfetti is one of my favorite cakes because we're adults. And we're Funfetti. We are Funfetti. Our other starter, which I realized I should have said earlier, but I didn't, is the uh, Piranha Plant Caprice, which Emma let us get because I wanted it because I love piranha plants. I think they're so fun. I love them. I love them aesthetically, but I hate them when I'm playing Mario Kart. But. Uh, it's a really nice caprese salad with tomatoes, fresh mozzarella, asparagus, and basil pesto served with mixed green shaved radish and an apple vinaigrette. So that was pretty tasty too. And so we're just going to kind of split everything and see what we think. <laughs> that looks good. First note, this melted in my mouth. This is going to be divisive. A, because it's mushroom, but B, because there are chunks of mushrooms in it. Ah. So texturally, I really like that. I enjoy how creamy the soup is with tiny chunks of mushroom. Very earthy palate, um, but a lot of people will not like that it's, you know, has that texture. For me, this is perfection. It's a cream of mushroom-esque, but it's lovely. Short rib. So I'm a little bit sad because this is what I was personally most looking forward to and it's very cold which normally we have our food for a while but because we didn't get as much we were able to get through it pretty quickly. The soup was still very warm when we were enjoying it. This one is very cold. So I just, I think if it had been hotter I would have really liked it. The short rib itself still falls apart really easily, has that nice kind of buttery fatty flavor. 
The gravy is fine. It's not like overly seasoned. I love the addition of the mushrooms. I just like that. Um, the polenta though, I want Quincy to talk about because I know she likes polenta more than me. As for the polenta, it's definitely suffering from how cold it is. And uh, Emma's right, like our food gets cool usually because we have to take pictures and talk about it. This is colder than it should be for when we got it by a lot. Like it's cold. It feels like it's cooled off almost completely. So I think maybe this was ready first and they were waiting on something else bringing our food out. Flavor wise, I'm actually relatively disappointed in the polenta because it's a goat cheese polenta and I am not getting a lot of goat cheese at all. And obviously texturally it's struggling because it's not warm anymore and polenta does tend to plump up when it's not warm. But I'm not tasting, I'm tasting the faintest bit of goat cheese. And like, when you have a goat cheese polenta, you want it to be like creamy and delicious and cheesy. And that's not the vibe I'm getting here. I do like it with the sauce. Um, I do like it with the beef. But I honestly think truly we got a bad one. I also think we got a bad one because we literally had someone stop by our table when they saw our food and she went on and on about how delicious it was, how much we're gonna like it. I just think we got short end of the straw. And sometimes that's gonna happen when you have such a low capacity restaurant with as many people there as they're trying to get through the doors. All right, I'm trying the piranha plant caprese. Mm, this is really solid. The tomatoes are super fresh. The pieces of mozzarella are so like huge and light and also heavy because that's what mozzarella is like. Um, falls apart part in your mouth, both the tomatoes and the mozzarella. And the basil pesto is the perfect amount to really get that basil flavor in there. My one complaint is I'm really missing balsamic on this because I'm a balsamic girly. It's why I like caprese salad so much and this doesn't really have a balsamic element. The apple cider dressing helps a little in that balsamic flavor because it does have the sweetness of balsamic but it's not the same flavor. So that being the reason I love Caprizi, this is a little disappointing in that way, but very good quality ingredients. The lettuce is nice, nothing's wilted. There's like these foresty mushrooms, there's like foresty mushrooms hidden in here, which I love how many mushrooms are hidden at this restaurant. Um, and then of course the piranha plant is like a tomato that is arranged on a piece of asparagus. I told them I was so excited by that because I was expecting it to be like a contrived like piece on the plate and it's literally just a tomato and some asparagus. I love that. It sounds like I'm complaining about it. I love it. We could so, do this as a birthday party theme. We could do this as a birthday party theme. I would do, I would get this again. It, I just would maybe pack some balsamic glaze. Okay, next I'm gonna try the princess peach cupcake and I'm gonna be realistic and eat it with a spoon because this thing is crazy. <laughs> it reminds me of those sugar cookies that you get at the store with the pink icing on top that kind of crumble and you either love them or you hate them. I team love them. And that's what this reminds me of. Do you know what cookies I'm talking about? I know about? exactly what they're doing. That's what it reminds me of. I actually really enjoyed this cupcake. I have had many a bad theme park cupcake. The Funfetti is actually really nice. It's moist. It's a good Funfetti. The icing is fine. It's nothing that stands out, but it's also not bad. So I'll give it a win. Honestly though, what I don't like is the filling. Quincy pointed out that it kind of is almost reminiscent of like that weird toothpaste you get at the dentist when you're little and they're trying to make it raspberry flavored. It almost reminded me of even like a stale raspberry donut, like that kind of filling. Just didn't love the filling, but if you're here and you're like, I don't want a sweet treat, this is a safe one. Overall, I think worth doing. I definitely think worth doing. It's a very cool experience. It might not be um, the most tasty, but I think it's something that we'll always remember. Yes. And some of it was tasty. Some of it was very tasty. I love that mushroom soup. Kyle. Kyle's now coming home with us, which is huge. Yeah, and like, we have a son now. Another. Another son, Mortimer. Yeah. yeah. And I'm a mother to Kermit as well, so three for me. Lots of kids, all boys. But overall, we really liked the restaurant. We enjoyed the experience. Would I go back there time and time again because I love the food? No. Except for that soup. I would go for the soup if I lived here. Yeah. And I would have 55 of these. Kyle. 55 Kyle. Oh. All right, we are making our way uh, back to Upper Lot because- I'm the stairs, okay? You're taking the stairs. I, I am gonna take the escalator. Why? <laughs> no reason. There's there's numbers on the stairs. Oh no, I forgot to take the stairs. Oh no. Man. 
All right, we have arrived at our next stop. We are hopping in line for the studio tour. This is probably the ride that Emma is most excited for. Yes. And for me, it's probably tied with the Mario Kart ride for excitement levels. This is an actual like tour. You get on a tram and you get a tour of the Universal back lot and you get to see like what's going on. Obviously right now it's a little low on the production because of the current strikes, but you can actually see like The Voice is getting produced here, E! Entertainment, Lopez vs. Lopez, Quantum Leap, um, and Access Hollywood are all like filming here day like today. So we're gonna actually head on a studio tour of the actual studio. That's the benefit of being in Hollywood is that Orlando has a lot of theme parks that like to pretend to be movie studios but are no longer movie studios. Whereas here in Hollywood, it's, it's, it's Hollywood. It's Hollywood. It is hosted by my arch nemesis Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, I've not been on it since he took over. And like I, I didn't used to think Jimmy Fallon was my arch nemesis, but the Jimmy Fallon ride at Universal Orlando has radicalized me against him at a level that is just dramatic. So maybe this will bring him back from the brink, but I honestly doubt it. All right, studio tour. Uh, we got a 30 minute wait, which isn't too bad. And this is an hour long tour. Again, this isn't really a theme park attraction. It's, an, it's a legitimate tour, which is just so cool to have in a theme park. And it's something that we don't get to do like a bunch unless you're upcharged paying for a tour of the theme park. No restrooms beyond this point. All right, after a 30 minute wait, which it was 30 minute posted, it was about just right on the money. Uh, we are about to board the tram, and what's awesome is that we moved the whole time. So it didn't even feel like a 30 minute wait, we were just kind of strolling through the line. I literally was about to say Norman Bates was the most impactful part of that for me. There's that one, the Jaws scene. The yeah, best. the Jaws is so cool because one thing, Universal Orlando had a Jaws ride. It was a blast, and they got rid of it. Uh, Harry Potter World ate it um, in a fist fight. Harry Potter versus and Jaws it wasn't the Shark. Fair because Harry used his magic, which like, is not fair. Jaws and do Jaws anything. is a shark, so it was animal cruelty. Yeah. But um, the arrest warrant for Harry Potter is still out to this day. It's still out to this day. A lot of people don't know that. But the Jaws segment is really reminiscent of that ride. There's a huge underwater shark animatronic that's so cool. Um, I also felt like many elements of, or many elements of the studio tour were reminiscent of Disaster 
from uh, Orlando, which is no longer around and was one of my favorite attractions. But like the part where the flash flood happens and things like that, that's very disaster. I don't know, that's a must do. Probably the best ride here, because it's just not a ride. It's a more all-encompassing experience. It actually has two so shorter versions of rides that we wait in line for at Universal I Orlando. I tell you, don't do that in yeah, Orlando. Yeah, but as the best, but a part of an entire experience, I think that's incredible. Yeah, as pieces, being able to just drive in and see those little 3D movies is really, really cool on the studio tour. Of course, we're talking about uh, Skull Island, Reign of Kong, and Fast and Furious Supercharged. But, I don't know, Studio Tour, just awesome. Both of us loved it. All right, so after we got off of the Studio Tour, the first place that you're gonna see is Simpsons Lands over here. Now, it's very similar to the one over in Orlando, so we might not spend a ton of time hanging out in this area, just because it is pretty much the same. Now, Orlando's is bigger. It's just a more widespread area. There's, it's a longer walkway. There's a few more things that you're gonna see. And there's actually an extra ride over in Orlando that they don't have here in Hollywood. Which ride is it? Chang and Kodo's Twirl and Hurl. I literally call it, in my own head, aliens flying high in the sky. <laughs> and it's been so many hours since we slept our nap sleep. We were like, that's it. <laughs> I was like, that's aliens the name. Aliens flying high in the sky. That's the name of it. Currently trying to find a bathroom to no avail, however, we did find this lookout, which is really cool. You can look out over the back lot, which we were just on with the studio tour. You can see Super Nintendo World. And then beyond, you can see San Fernando Valley. It's all lush and green. That must be, they, there is actually currently a Fast and Furious roller coaster under construction here at Universal Studios Hollywood. Um, not a lot of information about that yet, but I think it's gonna be pretty exciting. One thing that I've always thought uh, is that Fast and Furious lends itself way more to a roller coaster than any other type of ride. So. Keep an eye on allers.net for more updates about that one. Hopefully we'll get to come ride it. That would be super cool. Gru, 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 Gru. They have different uh, minion themed treats here than we do. So Nutella banana pudding. It has banana uh, runs on it. I love banana runs. Those are the best kind. Can I get a banana? All right, we are headed to our next stop. Um, I will say we are like traversing the park. It is like no, no big. It's so easy to get around. This is a very small theme park. Even getting between upper lot and lower lot, not hard. You kind of just go up a couple escalators. I actually am super obsessed with the storefronts here. They're incredibly detailed. Literally every single one I feel like I could stare at. Westminster School of the Dramatic Arts. Scooby-Doo! Scooby. Cruising. It's, Be it's Beetlejuice. Is that Lucille Ball? Lucy! Just, Lucy. just walking by. I do love the character interactions here as well. Uh, similar to Disneyland versus Disney World, Universal Studios Hollywood has more roaming characters, whereas in Universal Orlando, they gotta just stick to one place. But uh, we are actually headed to our next attraction. Hello Kitty! We're headed to our next attraction, which is gonna be Water World, which is, it is raining, so it's appropriate. Um, but this is a, what I like to call an LA rain shower, which in Florida, what I would consider a sunny day. Uh, with with regular humidity um, but we are headed to water world which is a stunt show with a uh, lots of really cool like special effects and things like that I'm super excited to see it because I love large-scale uh, theme park shows like this especially ones with like fire and stunts I do love stunts it is an outdoor theater, so keep that in mind if there is weather, but um, we are arriving about 10 minutes early, and I think we're going to be able to get seated. Just in general, as a rule with theme park shows, you really do want to arrive at minimum 10 minutes early, and for many of them, 20 minutes to a half hour early, just to make sure you get good seats. Now, the cast here are actually stunt people who are in the movies. We are in Hollywood, so um, stunt people that you might have seen and not known it. Uh, I'll do perform in the show. For instance, we just walked past the board that says who's who, and one of them was in Suicide Squad as a stunt double. So we'll check that out a little bit more to see who our cast is today after the show. But I'm excited. I love stunts. You may get wet. When um, we were on the studio tour, yeah. the tour guide said really high humidity today. And Emma and I <laughs> both looked at each other like, it's, it's not high humidity today. 
bone dry. I need lotion. Incredible. It was one of those things that we had talked about watching and then I was like, well, if we want to do other things, we can do other things. And then I read this. And then she read the description and was like, no, I, I really want to go. Yeah. So we sat down and I immediately remembered what the show was and looked at her and said, there's a part you're going to like. I did like it. And as soon as, spoiler, the plane launches, she went, <laughs> and I thought, yeah. I also think for most of the show, I was just doing this on his arm. Yeah. Like, just I like, was just very happy. Gently. I love stunt shows. I love silly little plots. And this one has, like, a surprisingly elaborate world. It is a very, the world, the world building is instantaneous, and but all, you get it. It's understandable, but yeah. it's also incredibly elaborate yeah. for a theme park show world building. Where the whole world is covered in water, and they're in search of dry land, but there's basically evil pirates called smokers. And it's like very like YA novel. Everyone's vibes. looking for dry land. Yeah. The smokers want to get to it first. And the show is basically a confrontation between the smokers and the, the water world water people. The water world people yeah. who are led by a guy who's a mariner who may or may not have actually developed skills. I couldn't tell <laughs> it's clear they never address it. I couldn't tell if that was a dig, like if he was just like calling him fish boy, half fish, half man. Well, at the end, you've got gills, you freak. I couldn't tell if that at the was all. end the narrator said she went to dry land and he did something for his people. I so think he really he had guilt. Fish? Okay, that was the only unclear part about the world building. But that's not important. Great. The important part is that people were flying off of things. Fireworks were getting shot in people's directions out of cannons. A man caught on fire. A plane launched, a, not on a track, not on a string. Yeah. A plane launched, launched towards the audience. One man came out of the water. Out of the water on, on a jet, jet ski. ski. The, he was under the water on a jet ski. And yeah. he came out of it. It was amazing. It was the like, stunt choreo was amazing. The acting was fantastic. Yeah. Um, and it was really fun because they actually called out some of the pro like TV and film projects that the actors had been in at the end. Yeah. One guy had been in Wakanda forever. Like It was really, really cool. Our villain was awesome. He was great. He was, he so was a amazing. nice one. Yeah. He was wild. Yeah. So it was a really cool show. I am a big proponent of not skipping theme park shows. I think it's great to take a seat. And I think a lot of times they will surprise you. I always skipped shows growing up. I would yeah. see like just Indiana Jones Stunt Spectacular and Light Motors Action. I like a stunt show. She does like a stunt show. But I would skip all the other shows and then I, my brother and I took a brother-sister trip where we did a lot of stuff we had never done before, hadn't done in years, and we watched shows. And it like totally changed my perspective and now that I have this job, see shows, especially when you hear that they have pyrotechnic and effects, yeah. like a lot of times it's really impressive stuff that you're not going to see elsewhere. So. A Waterworld, a big okay for me. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, I literally would watch it again if I didn't want to do, see other stuff in the park today. That's good. Yeah. Alexis, Alexis Aurora Max and Ariel, it's a pleasure to meet y'all. Can I get a picture with y'all? Yeah, let's do this. Big smiles now. And I Shrek's right him. over there. He's more dangerous. Ooh, man, I can smell it for you. Oh, Fiona's so pretty. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Harry Potter section of this park, and surprisingly, we will not be spending a ton of time over here. We'll talk well, about why after we find him. Harry? Yeah. Because of the warrant? One thing that you might not know about Emma and I, part-time bounty hunter duo. Only for Harry Potter because of Jaws. Yes. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> 
Alrighty friends, so we've made our way over to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter and it's pretty different than in Orlando, mainly because this is about it. Everything you're seeing, this is the whole Wizarding World and that's it. Whereas in Orlando, there's two. There are two. It's funny as you said that, I literally was like, this looks exactly the same. It looks exactly the same and yet this is somehow all of it. It's only Hogsmeade, no Diagon Alley over here. And a really big piece missing too. Yeah. Uh, from Hogsmeade. From Hogsmeade. If you know anything about Orlando, you know, you're gonna walk. You're like, oh, Hogsmeade looks great. I'm in a hurry though. I'm here for my favorite ride in the world, Hagrid's. Hagrid's magic. And guess what? Nothing. There's nothing here. There's no Hagrid's. And that's because there's only there is two Harry Dominic Maestros. There is Dominic Maestros. I'm so glad you brought that up. I was just about to get into that. And the fact that there's only two rides here. Flight of the Hippogriff and Forbidden Journey. Yes. Um, if the line isn't too long, it has been all day, which is funny because our Forbidden Journey line does not you just long. Yeah, you just walk right through. Yeah. But if the line isn't too long, we might check out the differences on Forbidden Journey because I think that would be interesting to see. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's small. It's, it's small. As far as um, things to do, places to eat, they only have the three broomsticks and the hogshead, whereas uh, Orlando has Leaky Cauldron. Now there are three shops that you'll find here um, that Orlando doesn't have. One is Zonko's, the other one is Galdrig's Wizard Wear, or the Hogsmeade Station Shop. You're not gonna find any of those over in Orlando, but really that's the only thing they have here that Orlando doesn't. Watch, 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 watch. The girl pecks his eye out. And then you get a gun. Wow. The window displays are very different here. That's not how our Birdie Bots Every Flavor Beans display looks. Over here, we don't have the candy floss that looks like this. So that's actually pretty cool. It's like, little I, detail. yeah, little details, there is variance. Also, uh, Emma mentioned there's not uh, Zonko's over in Orlando. That's because the Zonko's facade exists, but it actually is just more Honeydukes in Orlando. I will also say, even though it's a relatively busy day here, Hogsmeade is not body to body, which it always is in Orlando. Even on lighter days of the year, it's there. It's so slammed, you're like kind of having to turn sideways to walk through people. So it's definitely like, I think that's really cool. They got Dominic Maestros, you know? Now, we aren't gonna spend a ton of time in the Wizarding World right now, because we've got places to go, things to see. But this year is the Hogshead. This is one of my favorite bars at Universal in Universal Orlando, and we're gonna check it out here. One thing we noticed right off the bat is that it's empty, which is never the case in Orlando, but it's totally empty in here. Um, Hogshead, of course, in the movie is the bar owned by Dumbledore's brother, Aberforth, and um, it's a very cool bar. I love that. It's very cozy in here, and there's actually seating that you can use, which again, not something we have in Orlando. I do. It feels weird to be walking around the Wizarding World of Harry Potter dressed like this, because in this in, in this environment, yeah. I feel like I'm in Orlando, and in Orlando, there's literally no reason there's that we would be dressed as Mario and Luigi. Other than a strange choice we made. Yeah, that's true. Maybe we failed a challenge and we have to dress as Mario. Oh, that's so weird. It's like my, there's no bridge. It's like my brain is like, what's, what am I looking at? It's kind of like you're having a dream and some things are right, but then you just- This is, a, it's ex it right. is exactly like having a dream. Like, I literally am like, where, I, why can't I go this way? Yeah. yeah, no, it's super. Super strange. And it's so, like, I feel, I don't, actually don't feel this way in Galaxy's Edge because there's enough different that when I look around, I don't feel like I'm exactly. Well, Galaxy's Edge, like, like not luckily for us, but, like, is backwards almost. Yeah. It's kind of flipped. And the entrances so are in different places, and, like, the, you're coming from Frontierland already. It's just different. But, like, this is really weird because it's so similar. There's no lockers. That's another thing we've noticed. If you watch our videos or if you're familiar with Universal Orlando, um, a lot of the rides at Universal Orlando do require you to put any bags that can't go around your waist in a locker. And we have not had to put our bags in lockers once no. today. Well, I've worn my bag like this all day. Yeah. And part of the reason we wear fanny packs specifically to Universal is because you have to wear them around your waist for certain rides. Yeah. They've not said a word. It's no. It's been so strange. And, I'm, and also, we're not allowed to film on Universal Attraction in Orlando. No. And every ride we've gone on today, I've asked it if it's okay if we film. And they're like, 
they like look at me weird. Like it's a weird question. They're like, for us yeah, after. just no flash. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it's definitely there's some different rules here, which is gonna be true anytime you go to different theme parks. There are different rules in Disney World and Disneyland, so it's just something to be aware of. Like you it's never just know. Fun little differences. Yeah. For people who go to both parks. Yeah. Well go to both parks now for people to go to the other park to see this one yeah and when in doubt always ask team members they're happy to let you know what's going on okay so forbidden journey was just a little bit longer than we had decided that we would stay for so i think we are going to head back out okay here i'll take your picture go ahead hey is that your hero i love I'm so excited for you i'm a vampire girly that's true hello I would love to be a henchman. She would yeah, love to be a henchman. Qualified, I think. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that. That's fair. Let me grab this. Perfect. Looks Thank great. Thank you so much. I'll send you guys by. Put in an application, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. The usual stuff. I know the usual. I know the usual. I'll bring some, some good stuff by. <laughs> we are literally scoping out the different carnival games. You only have to make four. You have to make four. How good at basketball are you? Really bad. Now I will say over there, there appears to be a guaranteed winner game, but I don't know that it's open. I mean, I could make at least. I couldn't guarantee anything. I did win a dinosaur in Animal Kingdom on the basketball game. So did I. So maybe we're qualified. My family would tell you I'm not. I would tell you you're not. All right, Emma's gonna go for it. We've decided I'm gonna try my hand. Collectively as a team, we did decide. This. She's decided it's a basketball, basketball minion toss is gonna be it. I don't know why, but we have decided. I immediately regret this. You are so good at basketball. I've never been good. You know what you say to me all the time? I'm so good at basketball. Four more shots. I think we get the softest. If you want the money, get the bunny, but I was also going to say we could get the little unicorn. I don't want the little one. Okay, get the bunny. I guess we'll do the bunny. <laughs> All right, so you congratulations. You earned guys. the bunny, too. Thank you. Oh, I was right. It is. You guys have a nice day. Thanks so much. Thank you. It's like a special day. Do you feel accomplished? No. That was really impressive. You should probably feel accomplished. I feel actually much worse than when we started because I was so close. That's true, actually. If you would have failed miserably, this all would have felt better. Yeah, it would have been a funny joke. But you got the bunny. It is really soft, but now I have to find a way to get it home and we still didn't get a unicorn. But it is so fluffy on to die. Which was the whole goal. Consolation. It just... We have another son. Our son! Oh my gosh, we have to introduce him to Kyle. Come Kyle. on. Kyle. Kevin. Meet Kevin. Kevin and Kyle, the twins! Kevin and Kyle, they are twins. They were born the same day. The twins! Aww. Mortimer's gonna be so excited. Mortimer, I will not have any jealousy at all. He's gonna be fine. We already told him that we were going on a business trip. Well, okay. we are. We are. Super silly fun land actually has a few things. So there is like a water park aspect to it. There are a lot of kiddos over here with uh, bathing suits. It is one of those, if you don't want to plan it, you don't have to, but it is a really great water feature, especially for hotter days. Now over here, they have the silly swirly. It's kind of the version of their Dumbo ride, high in the sky, uh, flying ride. Very cute, just themed it as a despicable me. And in the back, there is a playground as well. It's not big. Uh, the water park aspect is definitely bigger, but it is back here if you want it. There's also some shopping and they have their own version of the Minion Cafe, which they fairly recently 
re-themed, uh, just like they re-themed it over in Orlando as well. So lots of things in carnival games. Can't believe I'm a Dracula. You did. You did meet Dracula. He said I could be his hench person. Well, that's really nice. He included everybody in that, and I really appreciate that. We've made our way back over to the illumination section of the park. Uh, the big features here are Despicable Me things and Secret Life of Pets, which we are so excited to do. There is a Secret Life of Pets dark ride here at Universal Studios Orlando. It is relatively new and I've seen some clips of it and it looks amazing. We did use the virtual line for it and it's about to open, so we're very, very excited to give it a ride. Just in general though, this whole area has amazing theming. Like Gru's house looks awesome, and obviously it does it Orlando too, but it's like in a neighborhood just like it is in the movies. And then they even have like Miss Hattie's Home for Girls, and that's where the meet and greets are, which is so cute. And then beyond that, they've had Super Silly Fun Land. So for the Secret Life of Pets ride, we actually are using the virtual queue. Now it wasn't open all day. Uh, it was about midday when lines started getting longer that they had it. You can join it through the app, or if you don't have the app, um, you can come up here to the virtual queue. It's right outside of the ride. And this will talk about the availability, the time that you can grab. But for us, it was easiest to do it on the Universal Hollywood app. It was very simple. We just opened it, clicked join. We put how many were in our party and the time. Leave them alone. They're have we're being rude. It's just down the hall that way. By the way, it's your turn. Look at all of you. You in a shirt. I did you look. Who's your group? Wow. You probably smell like churros and popcorn. Pets. It was so good. <laughs> it was so good. I didn't expect to be emotional today. No, I literally, at at, like, you can see tears in my eyes. It's because, like, we're both pet owners and we love our pets. She has a dog named Pepper. I have a cat named Hemingway. And that ride, you are a puppy who's going to get adopted. And there's, like, you get to go get groomed and then you get, you adopted, get adopted by a family. And then they're, like, celebrating. And one of the dogs is like, remember, humans need lots of love and attention. And we do. And I do need lots of love and attention. And I miss it's, Hemingway. I know it's it was so good. Yeah. Anyway, that's absolutely one to make a priority. Yeah. Especially if you're a pet lover, just like keep an eye on it. And if when you see it go to virtual line, grab that virtual, virtual line. line. Yeah, we it waited went, about an hour. We waited about an hour. I, I think it was worth it for my yeah. first time riding it. And honestly, I would probably say it was worth it for like the next few times riding it before I got tired of it. But I think that uh, we the virtual line went available while we were on the backlog tour. Yeah. I don't know when, but when we got off, we saw that the virtual line had turned on yeah. and we immediately booked for 5 p.m. and that was at, that was, that was at like one. Yeah, one -ish. So it didn't, it didn't go so speedy that you need to be watching it like a hawk, but it went fast and that ride is worth riding for sure. Yeah, absolutely. We're headed into the DreamWorks Theater featuring Kung Fu Panda right now. This is a 4D theater experience. So kind of like Shrek 4D. You're gonna sit in a theater, you might have some glasses on, might move you around, maybe some smells. Um, we'll tell you all about it. I'm very excited. This is one that neither of us have done before. And I personally love Kung Fu Panda and Jack Black. Oh, I almost forgot. 
right, we just finished up in the DreamWorks Theater featuring Kung Fu Panda. I actually really liked it. It was a really simple story. You went into the theater, you sat in chairs, they kind of, you know, moved around. Uh, as the story progressed and then sometimes there was mist if there was water and then at one point there were some 3D projections that kind of came around the theater. I was expecting it to be a little bit more like Shrek 4D, you know, you had glass and things like that, but I thought it was really neat even without that aspect. I also will say the chairs don't move a ton, so if you're no. like, they, you don't even wear seatbelts. Like no, you literally it's very like, chair. sometimes it's... It's a little uncomfy at times, like when it like hits, but it's not nothing bad. Now, it did make me realize an observation I have about Universal Studios Hollywood in general. Oh. And that's that we've actually been talking about just off camera how we don't love the park. Yeah. It's a little disjointed. It's very small. There's like a lot of things we really like about it, but the yeah. park as a whole, not our jam as much. Like, I love meeting Dracula. I really liked Waterworld. The rides we've been on have been really fun. The views are amazing. But the park itself feels disjointed. There feels like areas that just aren't being used. Yeah, it just their potential. feels almost like not like a theme park, like the second thought. Yeah, and when we are used to Universal Orlando, which has a little bit more it's, curation it's, almost. Yeah, it's been upgraded to a level that this just doesn't feel that. That said, something I'm really appreciating about this park is how tech forward the rides are. I completely agree. Because with that. we at Universal Orlando, the newest rides we have are Hagrid's and Velocicoaster, both of which are roller coasters, and both of which are amazing roller coasters, but they don't have, like, the ride isn't about the effects, it's about how fun the coaster is in a lot of cases. Whereas here, all the, the rides we've been on today mostly are slow moving rides, and the technical effects have been incredible. amazing. Secret Life of Pets, the animatronics, and the facial tracking. Yeah. In this, the projections were not, they were so crisp and clean, you don't even need 3D glasses for it to be yeah. able 3D. Um, what even, a, well, I was gonna say, even um, with the new Despicable Me shooting game, the mini con game in Orlando, it's very neat. I really like it. I think the most tech forward aspect is the app, which is already being done here through the vans at a more advanced level. Yeah, and obviously opinion. the augmented reality yeah. on Bowser. Just so it's just not even their newest ride that yeah. is tech forward isn't comparable to these, in my mm. opinion. And and so tech wise, I've just been really loving this park, which honestly is making me really excited for Epic, Epic Universe. Universe. We have talked about it because all day long. Epic Universe, all the rides there, many of them are going to be original as far as we know. Um, and if I if I'm seeing that this is what they're doing with tech yeah, at a Universal very theme park, excited. I am thrilled to see what they're able to do with those rides. So I can't wait. And obviously those rides will be have been in development a little later than these rides, so they might even have cooler stuff. So if you are curious about Epic Universe, you can check out my full breakdown of everything we know about Epic Universe so far. It's on the channel right now. Um, I researched a lot, so I'd appreciate it if you did check it out. It's gonna be so cool. It's gonna be and great. also, I'm a Dracula today. Probably gonna be Dracula at Epic Universe too. You think? I hope so. Manifestations. We are walking past France. We've walked through it a few times today. You might notice we haven't acknowledged it. No, I want That's because we don't really understand why it's here. Yeah. We... I'm... I don't know. It's actually really pretty, especially right now in this light. Yeah, there's a Moulin Rouge. I'm, I feel excited about the Moulin Rouge. Yeah. I love Moulin Rouge. I just saw it. It's just one of those things I need to start... I need to understand. I, I don't understand why France. Okay, we are headed back towards the lower lot, um, towards uh, Super Nintendo World, Jurassic World, all that good jazz to go on the mummy. But one thing we noticed when we were walking over was that Nintendo World has not filled up all day. Um, it's not felt super, super crowded today, but there were periods where all of the wait times were fairly high, uh, but it still has not filled up. So you never know. It's something to be aware of. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. That being said, may or may not fill up when you're here. Definitely something to keep an eye on, but as far as being here in August, when it felt semi-busy, I don't think, you know, I think it was fine. All right. We are probably ending our rides of the day with Revenge of the Mummy, the ride, um, which this is actually the only one that they ask you to leave your cameras, phones, all items in a locker. So we are gonna do that. This is the one they ask you not to fill on. Um, of course, it is a roller coaster, so that makes sense. Um, so we are going to drop our stuff off in a locker and then hop on the mummy. They are regular size, like pretty sizable lockers, honestly, and you can get bigger ones if you need them. But you go to these rental stations, follow the directions, rent a locker. That's what we're going to do, and uh, we'll see you after the mummy. Mummy complete. Check. 
We did not get turned into mummies. And we didn't see Brendan Fraser. Yeah, which was crazy. That, was that guy. For me, is the ride. Yeah, I actually don't I mean it's a great it's a great ride. No, it's still a good ride. It's a fantastic ride. Also, this park oh, doesn't just, have a lot of thrill rides. Love Brendan Fraser. It's pretty much this in Jurassic World, so it's nice that there's it's a roller nice coaster habit. and it's an indoor coaster and it's a super fun coaster. But where was Brendan Best Fraser. actor Brendan Fraser? With his cup of coffee. Technically without. Without his cup of coffee, yelling about his cup of coffee. coffee. Where was that? But that said, the ride was really cool. It was pretty much the same as Florida with a few differences. The coaster started a little early, which scared both of us. We didn't know what to expect. And then um, the curse breaks at the end. Which is new. In Orlando, the curse doesn't break. It's we just are cursed. always cursed. Yeah. We've been cursed for so long now. For so long. And our, the curse is broken. Yeah. So does that mean we can't ride it in Orlando? Or we we'll get cursed again? again, then we won't be able to break it until we come back here. Yeah. But here's the problem. I want to see Brendan Fraser. Yeah, so it's just tricky, but it was a great ride. Great ride to like wrap up our, our rides portion of the day. And now we've got a very exciting food situation happening. Dinner. Called dinner. All right, we made it to dinner and it is probably a familiar name. It's Minion Cafe. Recently rethemed. Recently rethemed, yes. Recently ish. Recently ish rethemed. This is a super cute restaurant and it might sound familiar because we do have a Minion Cafe in Orlando. I've done a full review of everything there is to eat there on the channel, but this is a totally different menu. The food isn't as themed, but it looks really good, pretty good. There's a pulled pork grilled cheese. There's chicken bacon ranch mac and cheese. So I don't know, we're gonna see if we can get some tasty dinner here. All right, we got our food. I went for the pulled pork grilled cheese that comes with banana barbecue sauce, which is why I chose it. It also has crinkle cut fries. I got the chicken ranch mac and cheese. Chicken ranch bacon parmesan mac cheese. So far, I've tried the fries. They're super crunchy, super hot and warm, and it's kind of chilly out for us at least. It really feels great. Yeah, so it's really nice to have super warm fries. The barbecue sauce, I wouldn't say I can tell it's banana. It just tastes super fruity, but still mostly just like a classic sweet barbecue sauce. Really? Yeah. Wow. Tender full pork, melty cheese, buttery bread, all stacked together. Super filling after a long theme park day. A winning meal for me. The mac's actually pretty decent. It's actually very creamy. I like the pasta. It's just nice and soft. Just regular pasta. Nothing crazy. The chicken is uh, falling apart pretty easily. The bacon is really great and crispy, which adds cool texture. Overall, simple, heavy, and warm, which I like. Thanks, Mini Cafe. Thanks, Mini Cafe. The park is open till 10 p.m. tonight. It's almost 8. Unfortunately, we are ending our night early because we have to catch a flight because we have some Disney events that we are doing in Disney World this week that actually are already up on the channel. We are headed home to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. Yay! So we've got to catch a flight tonight, unfortunately, which means we can't stay till close here. However, we got through everything we wanted to do. We did. With time to spare. Mm -hmm. And um, the only thing we're missing as of like nighttime entertainment is that the dark arts are happening in the Wizarding World with the Death Eaters and stuff right now. But I am sad to miss that, but it's not even a year-round thing. So I still consider this a perfect yeah, day. Absolutely. Um, I, I had such a fun time. Not my favorite theme park, but the rides I went on today blew my mind. They were so good. I'm so excited we finally got to experience Super Nintendo World. Yes. It's good all around. Yeah, Super Nintendo World was. Yeah. I can't wait to, to hang out more in it. At Epic Universe. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Now go check out our perfect day over in Universal Studios Orlando. See you See there. You there.